And as I say that, I can also see the work that I do when I walk beside others as being almost like being a speaking journal, a mirror to reflect back, or a container to hold space, an intuitive voice to respond. And our journal gives us all of those things. Welcome to the Henny Flynn podcast, the podcast that's all about deepening our self-awareness with profound self-compassion. I'm Henny. I write, coach and speak about how exploring our inner world can transform how we experience our outer world, all founded on a bedrock of self-love. Settle in and listen and see where the episode takes you. Today we're exploring a response to doubt. At the most recent journaling gathering in June, one of the areas we discussed was how our journal can become a wise and trusted friend, someone we can turn to in times of doubt or loss, crisis, pain, confusion, as well as times of energy and excitement, ambition, hope and joy. And before I go on to talk a little bit more about um, how we can work with our journal, um, I just want to say a little something about these journaling gatherings. And if you've been to one, then you'll know exactly what I mean. Um, And if you haven't yet been to one, hopefully this will make you feel a little bit curious about them. Essentially, they are small, really informal gatherings online on Zoom. Um, You can have your camera on or off. There's no requirement to do or say anything at all. It is so gentle and um, designed to be a really easy time. And they're held on a Sunday morning four times a year. I've designed them to be like a sangha for journaling. Um, If you're familiar with the concept of sangha, then you'll know it's Um, It's a time when people who meditate come together and there's something incredibly powerful about meditating with other people. Just as we are discovering that there is something incredibly powerful about journaling with other people. Now this doesn't mean that you have to read out what you've journaled or share anything about what's, you know, fallen onto the page from your pen. But what it does mean is that there is this moment during the hour when we gather where we are all writing at the same time in silence. And it is a strange phenomena, but it feels incredibly uh, collaborative, collective, supportive um, to be doing it in that way. And has surprised me beyond measure actually when I first came up with the idea I had no idea that it was going to be such a joyful lovely thing to do but the other aspect of it is the depth of connection that people have to the conversation that forms around us so we always begin with a meditation and then an exploration of a theme Um, although the topic might stray off that theme and and then I offer up um, one or two or maybe three different journaling prompts depending on how the conversation flows and what feels resonant in that moment and you choose what you wish to to write about. It's also an opportunity to ask any questions about journaling that you might have Uh, raise any challenges that come up for you you know often uh, we can find journaling challenging for different reasons and so it's a really lovely supportive space to share some of those questions and get answers not just from me but from the others there and you'll find that the people in the group 
range from those who've never journaled before or barely journaled through to people like me who journal often and and have you know um other things that spring from their journaling such as uh, such as my books my darling girl and um all the ways i tell myself i love you they they both came from um my journaling so you know it is a an open hearted open minded very welcoming space um and generally speaking is a a small and very informal group so if you'd like to come at the end of today's um episode i'm going to share a little bit more about our next one and if you're not yet on the mailing list then do get onto the mailing list these are the very low cost events i can't remember how much i actually um charge for them now but <laughs> very low cost designed to be accessible for everybody and if you've bought any of the journaling quests or the wisdom from within courses then these um these journaling gatherings are completely free so it's well worth um having a look and coming along so back to today's episode now i work with my journal in much the same way i work with those that i've asked to walk beside me at times in my life whether that was a coach or a friend or a therapist and as i say that i can also see the work that i do when i walk beside others as being almost like being a speaking journal a mirror to reflect back or a container to hold space an intuitive voice to respond and our journal gives us all of those things i also find it useful sometimes to return to past journals and see what wisdom came through at the time of writing um a gentle and often very appropriate reminder of wisdom i already hold within that simply needed refreshing now you'll know um if you've participated or listened to any of the um the journaling guidance i've given before that generally speaking i say write your journal get to the end of the page cl- shut your book and don't reread it however you might like to pick up old journals and reread those once you've had a little bit of time a little bit of distance from them but generally speaking i'd advise not to reread it in the moment because sometimes it can bring a bit of judgment we can read something we've written and because we we still might be a bit activated by something that's happened we could switch into a very judgmental mode and might get caught up in wanting to edit what we've written rather than just trusting that what went down on the page was what was needed in that moment so today when i was considering what to share here i turned to an old journal and the page i opened at random seemed to speak to the conversation we had had at that last journaling gathering and i thought well i'll share it here to see if it brings some resonance for you too you'll hear that this is one of those entries where i am in conversation with my journal where she is asking me questions and answering the questions i ask her i do know i am referring to my journal as an entity um as a female entity and you know that's how it feels for me so that's what i say um and it may seem curious to have this relationship with the written word but my understanding is that this is not unique many writers and journalers have this open dialogue when penning their thoughts and i find it immensely helpful to have this conversational style with my journal and all it takes really is a willingness to suspend the belief that it's not real for me 
it is a deeply true experience and one I am clearly <laughs> so grateful has found me. And, and it's not necessary. It's not a requirement of journaling. Without it, it doesn't mean that we're no good at journaling. And this felt like a really important point of awareness at that journaling gathering discussion in June. You know, this place of the journal is a place of no requirements. There is no judgment here. There are no right ways to journal. And back in June, I shared with the group that there are many times when my journaling is sporadic, inconsistent, messy, where the words match the sporadic, (laughs) inconsistent, messy thoughts in my head and feelings in my heart. And I go with it. I let that too pour onto the page, trusting that something will come through that helps me in the moment. Opening up my heart and mind to this place, safe in the knowledge that I am safe here. I can write anything and my journal will never reject me. Of course, I'm less likely to share those entries with others. You know, some are so tenderly personal that they are for me only. Others simply don't make sense when I read them back. At least, you know, they might make sense to me, but they don't make sense in the traditional way we like writing to be with punctuation, grammar and um, recognised meaning. So... I share the ones that flow more comprehensively and and this one I'd like to share today. It was written sometime in early 2020. As you may know, I don't date my journal entries, but I do date which month I began and finished each journal on my shelf. And so therefore I know roughly when or roughly which time of year each uh, entry was put down. So this entry is about doubt. And as I reread it, I liked the practical and emotional support my journal offered up to me. It may be there's something in here that sparks thoughts that are useful for you too. And that's my hope. So in a moment, I shall read Journal 7, Day 435. I am afraid that my assurance is slipping. That there is a dip on the horizon. That I'm going to feel a bit miz. And that it's like a slow moving cloud that I can't outrun. What do you want to do? I want to understand whether it's something that ultimately serves me. Do I learn and grow from these times? Or is it something I can learn and grow in knowledge about? And through that, allow it to pass over me without getting lost in it. What sounds most true? The latter. What will most help you? Writing here. I am here with you. You know that, don't you? I am here for you always. Whenever you need support or succour, you know you can reach out and hold my hand and I will walk with you. I do know and I am so grateful. What else will help you? Taking time to rest in a restorative way, not blocking it out but allowing it to wash over me, not resisting, just being. What else? Being outside, walking, running. Running helps. Then run. Prepare yourself today and run tomorrow. Rise early and run. It will gladden your heart, my love. Okay, I shall. Thank you. I will do a yoga nidra today too. Good. What else? The weight that sits 
It is full of doubt. It tells me I can't do these things and leaves me feeling stuck. So do some things that you know and choose one thing that you don't. Unstick one aspect of what you are feeling held back by. Continue with the work you were doing when you began to envision how you want to work and be. Create it, draw it up and then action an aspect of it. Better yet, choose something from the beginning, middle and end and action all three and don't lose sight of all that you have done. That voice of doubt, she wonders what any of it is worth. She is thirsty for praise and attention. Let her know that you see her, that you do what you do because it feels right and that each small step moves you forward. Remember, you are feeling a collective sense. This is not just yours. Many in the world are stuck today and wondering if what they do has value. Stay true. You have a vision and a purpose and they shall guide you. And then I always close my journal with the words, thank you and three kisses. (laughs) So the next journaling gathering on Sunday, September the 25th at 11am is for an hour. As I said before, it's like a sangha for journalers. We do a brief mindful relaxation practice, then journal quietly together. There's time to reflect on what comes up for us and see where the conversation takes us. It is always a magical hour. I don't know what it is that creates that special space, but there's an alchemy in the place of no requirements that makes it a wonderful place to be. Everyone is welcome. Whether you've journaled in the past, think you might love it, think you might hate it, tried it, want to try it again, already know it's something you adore, whatever. You are welcome here. And perhaps there will be moments when you too look back on your journal and find that the words that you open your book to are things that guide you again. These words, they may not just be for that single moment of writing. They may be things that last and support you time and time again as you move through these days. So I'm sending you love as ever and a hug and a wave. <laughs>